Yo, what is going on, Dank Fam? It's your boy Mike Diesel, and today I got a special treat. You guys have been asking for so long, and I've been so embarrassed about this bike, but finally I'm happy that she's relatively decent looking, right? You're probably wondering why this video is so crispy. It's because Rock's out here, they're filming for me, so I was like, hey, while we're out here shooting some videos for them, why don't we do a bike walk around of Betty White so I can tell you what we finally have accomplished on her. Let me slow you down for the people that are new to the channel. It's a 2003-2004 Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R. Myself, I've been stunt riding for about five years. I've rode plenty of other stunt bikes here and there. I'll shout out the FRIs because they did get me some, some skill. I'll give them that. But Kawi has been my bike since uh, I've started riding. I had a 1999 Kawasaki Ninja 500. And ever since then, I fell in love with the brand. And I'm basically just gonna go through it and tell you guys everything about it, all the parts that I have on it. So if you're new to like stunt riding and everything else, this is videos for you, but also the fans of the channel that wanna know everything on this bike, I'm ready to show you guys. First and foremost, her name's Betty White, and I love her, <laughs> tell you that much. Everything that I've gotten on this bike, I pieced together within the past year when I bought the bike. I used, but with bone stock, nothing added to it stunt park wise. Biggest thing with me is crash protection. You gotta have the right crash protection on it. So what I went ahead and did is get a nice sturdy crash cage. We also got a nice sub cage. This sub cage, guys, is righteous stunt metal. Ever since I was a young stunner, I've been wanting one of these sub cages, so I finally got it. And uh, it's one of my sponsors actually, so I'm super proud to be representing their stuff. A couple things that are stock are the subframe, the swing arm, the back wheel, the front wheel, and the engine. There's no engine modifications. You don't have to do any kind of timing or anything like that. You slap a big sprocket on this bike and you go and do some wheelies. That's why I love this bike. It's a great platform. The only downside with these ZX6Rs is they're very weak. Um, so that's why I was getting into detail first and foremost about having crash cages. So when you're building a stump bike, crash cages are very important. You might think you're good at street wheelies, but if you don't get a crash cage on your bike, you might drop it sooner or later and it's gonna suck because these engine casings get hurt, the covers, everything else. So it's not a good time. Get a crash cage if you're getting serious about stunning. This is called a front crash cage and this is called a sub cage. And this is also very nice because you can adjust it up and down and swivel it down. So if you're short, you can slide the pegs forward. If you're tall, you can slide the pegs back. It's great. Um, another great part that I have off RSC is this stunt or the stunt exhaust can right here. And the reason I love that exhaust so much is because it's out of the way. It screams and it makes great performance. Who the hell? Hold up, we're doing some. Is that? Is that a car? I give him props. We're up in like the eighth floor of a parking garage. Trying to set the mood over. Ooh. So now that we got the mood set for Betty White, we're gonna go back into the tour. A big thing that I like to use is a big rotor kit. If you look right here, we have two calipers. Most bikes come with one caliper and it usually runs to the foot brake. So we still have the foot brake caliper. It's just been upgraded to a Brembo P32 caliper. And then we also have a monoblock front caliper off a of Yamaha R6 that I've converted over to a handbrake. This is an 80 inch core moto steel braided hand brake line. It is 24 karat gold, quote unquote. And I got it from the moto store. All my braking parts that I get from my bike, as far as brake pads, calipers, brake lines, I go through the moto store. If you guys are getting serious about stunt riding, you don't necessarily need steel braided brake lines right off the rip, but steel braided brake lines help with uh, less brake frayed. They look great and you don't have to worry about any kind of sponginess to your brakes. They're very pinpoint on demand. So my front brakes, I'm not too big on a lot of front brake tricks. I do burnouts, but not a whole lot of stoppies. I use the Magura HC1 15 millimeter, and then I got stock front calipers up front. Nothing too different about that. A lot of people are very particular about running 0304 forks, so they switch to the 0506 forks, which I have right here. Um, but as you can see, I broke the ears off my uh, fender. I can't put any kind of front fender on here. So it gets a little rowdy with this brake line kind of bouncing around. So guys, definitely rock a fender, I just don't have one. Um, the radiator, very important. One thing I'll tell you guys about stump bikes, they overheat in a parking lot, practicing all the time, so it's very crucial to get two fans. You, every bike usually comes with one fan, but this bike has two Yamaha R6 fans. And look at this puppy scream. 
You can run your fans off a switch, you can run them to uh, your stock fan settings, but I personally run them off a switch. I keep an eye on my temperature and I turn it on right around 180 degrees. And honestly, with these two R6 fans, uh, this bike doesn't really get over 200 degrees, even some hot weather. Um, so yeah, if you're right around 200 degrees riding on, on your stump bike, it's probably gonna perform the best. And um, I also use the damage control radiator cage, and that just protects your radiator from any kind of side impacts if you smack a pole or something like that, because things do happen. This frame is, comes with a VIN. It's a badass industries frame. And the cool thing about it is once you go ahead and get it registered, it's practically like you're registering a brand new bike for the first time. So myself, I broke the stock frame on this bike that actually is legal and registered. So I kind of was stuck with a bike that has no legal frame for it. So I went ahead and contacted Badass Industries, got this beautiful frame powder coated by Mako Metal Finishing. And now I can go ahead and take it to the DMV and get it registered because I've been super busy and haven't had a chance to. Right here, you got your gauge cluster, nothing fancy about that, just original gauge cluster. It works, does its job. Very important to have so you can check the temp right there. And you can also see your RPMs and everything else. So I like to keep it out of the way. I don't really use it much rather than to check the temp. So when I'm looking down on my bike, I can see it no problem. Uh, your clutch cable, nothing fancy about that. I got the RSC Easy Pull Clutch. I wanted a Rasta clutch for so long and I finally got it guys, so I'm so stoked. You'll see right here this random lever that no bikes usually have. This second lever is for your handbrake, so if my legs are over the tank, I don't have a way of using my foot brake, which most bikes only have. So I went ahead and put this Magura 15 millimeter handbrake running to the handbrake line that we were talked about earlier, and that's going to allow me to use the handbrake whenever. I'm not really proud of this um, with these wires holding the grips together but it's doable, it gets the job done, but uh, usually you wanna use some kind of grip glue or something like that. Right here is my lucky $20 bill. It used to be just so I could go to gas stations um, on these random group rides in the middle of nowhere, and if I was in a crunch, I always had money in case I needed to get gas. Um, but now it's just a conversation piece because everybody asks me about it rather than anything else about this bike. One big thing I like to use, guys, I don't blow fork shields and I have a lot to thank for these shock socks that I use. They don't sponsor me or anything like that. I just really believe in them and I think they work really well because not to mention slamming wheelies down, but you also blow forks is a lot just getting dust up in here. So if you're riding your street bike and dusty roads and stuff like that and you never wheelie, it might be because you're getting dirt up in these seals. So very nice investment and they're only like 30 bucks. I can't really show you guys this too much because it's all under the gas tank. But what this is, is a clean air mod. I went ahead and smashed the filter it looks like. I'm just not realizing that. Um, but this runs all the way back to the crankcase of your bike. And I have another video on my channel about not blowing up your engine and it explains how the clean air mod is installed and why it's so important. But this is the filter that sticks out from it. So you're probably wondering, some people might be wondering what that is. So I told you guys this bike's street legal. Here's the headlight right here. I just gutted a LED box in order to make sure that it fit and um, it works out just fine. That's actually wired to my fans. That way, if my headlight's not on, I can know that my fans are not on and I'm gonna blow my bike up soon. Stun Army Triple Tree, it gives me plenty of options so I can add dirt bars to it, which dirt bars and clip-ons are one of those things you might like them or love them. It's just you gotta pick one of the two that you like, what's most comfortable to you. Right here, it's got my reservoirs for my front brake and then my handbrake. So everything's right here and they're out of the way. And then I have padding over top of the uh, bars right here. That way, if I throw my legs over, I'm not scratching them on these bolts or anything like that. Right here, I got the GPR stabilizer. I got my Rurox sticker over top of it, you know what I mean? And uh, the cool thing about this stabilizer, it's got the setting one through eight. And as you click it higher into the numbers, it makes your handlebar stiffer. So I've clicked it on accident, not even recognize it. And I'm like, why are my handlebars staying straight? I can't turn. And it's because it was at eight. But I ride it at one, but it's a really nice option to have once I start getting into stoppies. Because um, when you're on one wheel up front and the back wheel's up, uh, it's nice to keep the bar straight and having the mechanism that does it for you is really nice. So one of my nice sponsors I have is um, Tank Tanks. He's a very new to the scene tank builder. I gave him a shot to go ahead and build this tank up for me and it's been holding up great for the past six months. Um, basically, you have a couple different ways you can do a gas tank dent. You can do what I did on my channel one time where you take a hammer on a stock bubble gas tank and you just hammer it down and it makes it all nice and smooth. Or you can do what this guy did, and he actually takes the top of the tank and he cuts it all around, peels it off, and then he makes a flat piece and he just lays it on there. And then you can build bridges 
inside of the tank before you put the flat piece on to make it to where when you sit on it, it doesn't smash it in or cave in. Um, and then after that, you just seal it up. But what he does really well is he talks to his customers and he lets them know um, exactly what they want with their lip. And he sends me a lot of pictures whenever I'm getting a new tank built by him. So he's very hands-on. And then he makes this very nice welded on bung gas cap. And I keep that thing tight, boy. I'll tell you what. But it just pulls right off. And uh, there you go, easy as that. So I'll be getting all my tanks from this guy because the biggest thing with stump parts and building a stump bike, you might have all the money in the world, but the hardest part about building a stump bike is getting all your stump parts in a timely fashion. Um, so the main thing with him, um, with a lot of things, these badass steel frames and these gas tank builds, they're very custom things that people are taking the time to build by hand. So they take a long time, but this guy has really great turnaround time. I had really great experiences with Billy Badass, and um, I'm just really scared to get a tank built because I just can't deal with that downtime. Um, but they've been really great. So I highly recommend you get a welded on gas tank. Some people just do the dent and it works, but myself being a taller guy, I need as much clearance as I can get. So I had to make the lip far back and it works out great. Uh, these are Hohei rear sets, by the way. It's basically just a solid CNC machined rear set. Nothing's different about the shape. It's the same shape as OEM, but this is thick, solid aluminum versus cast aluminum. So when you smash these pegs, they don't break. They just bend at the worst, but I've beaten these pegs up and they're still holding up. No problem at all. But that's a very uh, OG company. A lot of people use them. Here's a little trick, guys. I'm actually going to be designing a uh, product to work for 0304 ZX6R riders. But right now, I have these mud flaps. Yes, from a semi. Mud flaps from a semi. So that's when the tank digs into the subframe. It doesn't actually scrape the subframe up. It's just sitting on top of these. So that makes my tank super sturdy, too. Like, literally, you go up to anybody's stump bike and you will get their, their gas tank, it's going to have some wiggle to it. But you cannot wiggle my gas tank. It's perfect. One, one thing that I've always wanted when I first started stunning with some HT Moto seats. Uh, Jason Britton's a really big inspiration. He rocks them on his bikes and they're just such a clean OEM, original looking seat. Um, just, just very professional looking seats. This one's got some very nice stitching. This material is a little more texture and grippy so you can hold on a lot better. And then you have these ribs built in, um, which makes it so easy. I do no handers and everything else. Very, very simple. Um, right here, the back seat. This is the bread and butter essentials. When you have a hole cut out in it, this allows you to go ahead and put your foot in and do all kinds of different tricks. And then I have this platform right here. A lot of seats are nice and smushy, but this one is super thick. So when you're stepping on all the time, it doesn't deteriorate your seat material over time. I'm um, starting to rip up the stitching a little bit, but that's inevitable when you're jumping around on it all the time. But HT Moto, I don't have any affiliation with them, but I've been wanting their seats forever. And ever since I got them, they're exactly what I thought they'd be. I love them. And then right here, we got a 12 o'clock scrape bar. Easy peasy, it mounts up right here. You can't really see it, um, but there's three mounting points on each side. It bolts right to it, but usually you would scrape the bike right here. But since you have this 12 bar, it brings it back to here. Um, so it, it's kind of tricky with like technical circle wheelies. Sometimes I smack it on accident, but for the most part, it makes sparks. This puck right here is titanium and titanium makes the most amount of sparks that I know of when you're uh, scraping doing wheelies and everybody loves scrapes. As far as fairings go, obviously it look great with all the fairings, but I've destroyed them over time. So I have the tail fairing, nothing fancy about that. My buddy Walter at Majestic Wraps went ahead and did this for me and I learned a lot from him, learning how to wrap some tail fairings. Cause he did this in one piece, which is really impressive. I've already cracked it though. <laughs> Sorry, Walter. So yeah, we're almost done with the walk around. I just want to show you guys the gearing real quick because gearing and handlebars are probably the two most personal parts that you guys want to make sure that they fit your needs. You know, your buddy might be the best rider out there, but unless the bike is suited to your needs and your comfort, you're not really going to learn honestly until that bike's exactly how you'd want to ride it. So last but not least, the gearing right here. My favorite sprocket combination, 520 pitch chain with 120 links, a 60 tooth thrust sprocket in the rear, and then down one front sprocket. Um, that's my favorite combination. I can still get about 100 miles an hour on the street, and it's great in the parking lot. You can get technical, but the more higher in the sprockets that you go back here, the more pull the bike's gonna have at lower speeds, and it just makes everything a lot easier when you're stunting in the parking lot. 
Um, but since I'm doing everything on this bike, I like to have a good universal balance between some top end speed and still being able to get technical on it. So I hope you guys are still awake after this long detailed video of Betty White. I know a lot of you guys are out here stunning and I'm super happy that you guys are getting into the sport. And uh, hopefully some of these parts in this walk around help you guys out and um, maybe help fine tune your bike a little bit. That's relatively it. There's nothing really on the inside of this bike that makes it any special to do the tricks that I do besides the stunt parts that help out. Um, but over time, as you get better as a stunt rider, you start to tend to take all these parts off or you get a bone stock bike and you don't need any of these parts as you build skill with bikes that have all these easy buttons on it. But um, it's all about getting out there. The main thing is you could have the best bike ever, but if you're sitting around not riding it, you're not gonna get any better. So that's the main thing, seat time, but having the proper setup bike like this to take the beatings that you give it, makes you progress more than anything, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything on this bike that I didn't cover that you guys would like to know about. And like always, keep it dang. Later.